I've stumbled across a rather odd post on an obscure Minecraft forum. It's by a user who's named Faceless. The post contains the contents of a message from someone named David, who believes that he possesses a cursed Minecraft world. Let's take a look at these messages. I hope you can help me with a rather strange case that happened to me. As I understand, you have extensive knowledge on the dark side of games, and in this case, the game in question is Minecraft. David's story begins back in 2011, in Minecraft Beta 1.3. The post describes how David and his friends played on a personal Minecraft server. Things initially started out normally, but after about a week, strange problems began to occur. A friend of mine built a hotel, and it seems to be the source of all the issues. Inexplicably, an unreasonable number of creepers began appearing near the hotel. There were around 400. His friend constructed a long tunnel called the Maze of Doom, which led to their new house. But the bizarre bug continued. Creepers spawned so often that the group eventually decided to give up on their world. We ultimately decided to bid farewell to our cherished, expensive server and continued forward in our lives. Three years later, nostalgia caused David to find the backup of the server. I decided to delve deep into my files and backup disks. I found the server folder, named Brabantia. David copied it into single player. Upon starting the game, his computer crashed with a blue screen of death. He tried again, and he was able to get into the world. But David discovered that something had changed. I rebooted and tried to enter the world again. Now I witnessed something strange. All the creepers had turned into cows, with the same quantity as before, around 200. Intrigued, David recruited a friend to help him explore. They opened the world in a multiplayer server, disabling mobs to remove the cows. The team went to the Maze of Doom, but the server crashed several times. Changing their approach, David remained above ground while his friend navigated the tunnels below. Then, David discovered something. I saw something strange, a peculiar structure that looked like a grave made of quartz blocks. The unsettling part is that this block did not exist in the beta version. It's not a case of new Minecraft features mixing with old ones, as my friend's maze passed beneath this grave, indicating that the structure existed when we played. However, the odd part is that I asked everyone who played on the server if they built such a structure, and all of them claimed to have no idea what I was talking about, so I decided to let it go. David attempted to access the server again later, but he got a blue screen every time he tried to connect. He decided to step away from the situation and send the message to Faceless, who posted it on the forum. Perhaps someone would be able to make sense of it. David's story is remarkable, describing odd occurrences in a beta Minecraft world, these are the types of claims that have been made popular ever since the proliferation of Herobrine. But there's something that sets David's situation apart from the rest. I'm attaching the original world file directly from the backup, which hasn't been opened since 2011. If you wish, I've also documented some of the other server crashes and the strange things that occurred. Below the text on the forum post is a link to a download of David's world. Perhaps within, we will find the answers to one of Minecraft's most obscure unresolved mysteries, the mystery of Burbantia. The attached archive is named davidandimaserver.rar. Upon extracting it, we find that the file structure is actually somewhat complicated. There are multiple world saves, other rar archives, and server files, all of which are from 2011. Untangling the mess takes a bit of work. There are a grand total of six different Minecraft saves within this archive, scattered throughout the file system. These saves represent snapshots of two different worlds at various points in time, a level called World 4, and Brabantia, which was mentioned in the DM. Assuming the metadata is correct, we can use the date modified attribute to put these saves into chronological order. Let's start with World 4, the older of the two. There are a pair of snapshots, one with only the nether, saved on February 2nd, 2011, and a rar file containing the whole world, saved on February 7th. These dates suggest that World 4 was played on Minecraft Beta 1.2, and there's some additional details which support this. World 4 contains blocks such as birch logs, which did not exist prior to Beta 1.2. But we also know that this world was not played on Beta 1.3. World 4 is saved using a scheme known as the Alpha Level Format. In Beta 1.3, this format was replaced with a new way of saving levels called MC Region. Since World 4 does not have any MC Region save data, we know that it was only played on Beta 1.2 versions. We can explore this world, but we don't immediately find anything interesting. There's a very standard city with houses, statues, and farms. 
There are a few chunk errors, but nothing too far out of the ordinary. The nether is sparsely populated with very little infrastructure. Overall, there's nothing really cursed about World 4. It seems quite normal, in fact. However, the same can't be said for the second world, named Burbancha. There are four different saves of Burbancha, representing a state of the level at four different points in time. We will call these snapshots Burbancha A, B, C, and D, where A is the earliest known save and D is the latest. The first version is Burbancha A, which was saved on March 19th, 2011. It is nearly identical to Burbancha B, saved just two days later on March 21st. Let's load this up into Minecraft Beta 1.3 and explore. We find ourselves in the middle of the wilderness, with no civilization in sight. But within our first few moments on this strange world, we notice that there are some unnaturally sharp walls in the distant terrain. This type of feature typically indicates that there was some sort of change in the terrain generation. It's seen most often following an update. The sharp border delineates the old generation from the new. Let's walk in that direction. We don't see anything noteworthy, we're still somewhere within the wilderness. But after about three minutes, our character suddenly freezes, unable to progress. We can look around, but we are incapable of moving. Any mobs that happen to be nearby are similarly frozen. Quitting and rejoining, we find ourselves in the same predicament. As it turns out, we're actually stuck forever. I've been unable to find an in-game escape from this softlock. Fortunately, we can use external tools to move ourselves around. Before we do that, however, let's take a look at this world in Minotaur, a mapping software compatible with Beta 1.3. The coordinates of our player are just outside of civilization. By editing the player NBT data, we can move ourselves to the town center. But this does not free us from the trap. Even if we reset the world and start over, we still freeze any time we get close to the main settlement. It seems as though there's something in this area that's at fault. We can teleport ourselves to various places, but it's still not immediately obvious what's gone wrong. This teleportation is a tedious way to explore the world, so let's bring it into a modern version of Minecraft with spectator mode. When we upgrade the world to 1.16, we find that the freezing issue no longer exists and we can fly around at will. The world must have been played on for a decent amount of time, as there's a fair bit of development near the city center. Mining operations have been carried out deep underground, and many of the adjacent caves have been explored. As we survey this place, we discover various landmarks. The hotel is a simple wooden structure with a fence surrounding it. This is supposedly the source of the cursed creepers, but it appears completely normal. Nearby, there's an underground door with a sign indicating that this is the entrance to the Maze of Doom. This was also mentioned in the DM. We know that the end of this tunnel is a new house built to escape the infestation. Sure enough, the canal leads to an igloo. The existence of these landmarks tell us that the early part of David's story occurred prior to the date of this file save, which was March 21st, 2011. And while it's fun to see what his friends were building, it's still not clear what's wrong with this world. The causes of the freezing seem to have been fixed in modern Minecraft. So let's go back to Minecraft Beta. One thing we can try is to open this world in an old version of MC Edit, which is a Minecraft world editor. The controls are a bit clunky, but we are able to do this without an issue. As we fly around, we once again don't see anything clearly amiss, besides the regenerated chunks. But if we look closely enough, we'll eventually stumble across something interesting. In MC Edit, translucent red blocks indicate entities, which include objects such as mobs or items on the ground. Right by the hotel are a few entity blocks that are dark red. There are multiple entities stacked in this same location. MC Edit doesn't show what these entities are, but we can teleport our player next to them and load up the world. The frame rate drops dramatically, but the game doesn't crash. Looking in the direction of the infected block, we discover that it contains cows. It's unclear how many, but it's more than a couple we can see that their mob labels are superimposed text of multiple ID numbers. Furthermore, the shadow beneath them is very dark, presumably from several being added together. This is it. The freezing occurs when these cow pockets are within simulation distance. We find this issue in both Burbantia A and in Burbantia B, the last of which was saved on March 21st, 2011 at 3.21 p.m. The next version, Burbantia C, was saved just 58 minutes later. And when we load up this world, we find something very different indeed. The cows are everywhere. There are so many of them, hundreds and hundreds. A sea of cows, a bovine tsunami. These cows suffocate the Minecraft client, bringing it to its knees. Frame rates drop to sub-integer levels. Cows and cows and cows and cows. How many cows? I'm not sure, but I do know that it's too many. 
an unnatural amount. Something is very, very wrong with this Minecraft world. We can open Burbantia C and MC Edit to get a better picture of this infestation. We find that it's densest near the hotel, the structure that David believes is the source of this world's problems. But the cows are not limited to this fenced-in area. They've spread out to the surrounding landscape, rendering the nearby city uninhabitable. This cow distribution leads to a logical theory. Perhaps, somehow, the cow-infested blocks from Burbantia A and B were perturbed, leading to the rapid release of all these cows into the nearby blocks. And while the simulation freezes in my beta environment, it's actually possible to see this effect if we open the world in a later Minecraft version. As we enter the city, cows can be seen spurting outwards from a few specific blocks. Perhaps something similar happened in the beta server. But how? What changed? In our search for clues, we discover that there's an intriguing file within the archive, the server log. This contains a treasure trove of information, telling us about player joins and leaves, server restarts, commands, and even chat messages. Perhaps this will help us uncover what happened between the save of Burbantia B and the save of Burbantia C. So let's dive into the server log. According to the records, Burbantia B's final save occurred at 3.21 p.m. on March 21st. This is in alignment with the creation date of the RAR file. Immediately after that, the server starts. A user named Eric logs in. We know that he is the one running the server, since his username has the same IP address as the server. He leaves the game after less than two minutes of playtime. The server stops just afterwards at 3.24 p.m. Then, at 4.18 p.m., the server boots again, with Eric joining once more. This time, he leaves after just 40 seconds. Eric stops the server at 4.19 p.m., and this is where Burbantia C is saved. This is very interesting. In the time frame after the Burbantia B snapshot, Eric played on the game for a grand total of 2 minutes and 29 seconds. But these were an impactful two minutes, because this is when the nature of the entity spam changed completely, from a few glitched blocks to cows everywhere. What happened during these few moments? Did Eric somehow cause this change, or was he just there to observe it? Is this the reason that he decided to make a backup of the world? Continuing with the logs, we find that the server starts once again about two hours later. Now we are seeing events that occurred before the save of Burbantia D, the final snapshot. A user named Eric with an A attempts to join, but they've been banned. The IP address tells us that this is still Eric with an E, and they use the console to unban themselves, making that account a server operator in the process. Eric sends a few commands, but eventually leaves. They log in a few more times, sometimes changing their username. They also use WorldEdit, presumably to build a new tower that is seen by the city. It's also worth mentioning that Burbanch is renamed to World prior to the server boot on March 22nd. The reason for this is not obvious. If we open Burbantia D, we discover that the cows have been replaced with feathers. Using MC Edit, we can see that they've spread out to a broader region, finding their way into the forest and lake. It's hard to tell if the total number is any different, but the fact that the entities have changed form entirely is notable. On March 27, 2011, at 4.55 p.m., the server closes for the final time. The strange entities have defeated the players. The Burbantia server is no more. Now's a good time to take a step back and give an overview of what we found in this mysterious archive. There are saved snapshots of two server worlds at various points in time. World 4 has two partial snapshots, but doesn't contain anything especially odd. Burbantia, however, has four snapshots. Each of these are odd in some way. A and B both have dense cow blocks, which cause the game to freeze. Burbantia C has the cows uncompressed and filling the nearby landscape, and Burbantia D has the cows replaced by feathers. Our working theory is that the dense cow blocks seen in A and B were somehow activated, resulting in the mobs exploding outwards into the world, an effect that can be seen in later versions. But to this point, we've mostly been trying to understand what we even have. We haven't considered how these cows got here in the first place. Unfortunately, we don't have a save of the world from before the spawning of the cows. They're present in the earliest backup, which is Burbantia A. This means that they were generated sometime between the initial creation of Burbantia and the moment of the first backup. By using the server log, we can see that Burbantia was first created immediately after the server was upgraded to Beta 1.3 on March 8th, 2011. According to our timeline, there were 11 days of playtime prior to the first backup. Let's focus on this time frame to see if anything jumps out at us. By using the timestamps of the chats, we can find confirmations of the existence of certain landmarks. As an example, the hotel was made by David G, and was finished just two hours after the generation of Burbantia. We know this because of his triumphant message, The hotel is done. The tunnel, or canal, is first mentioned on March 10th at 5.10pm. 
this is probably the same one connected to the Maze of Doom door. We have reason to believe this because 45 minutes later, Rx Dima mentions looking out of the window of their igloo, which confirms that it was completed sometime before this message. Since the DM said that the Maze of Doom connected to the igloo, it probably exists at this point. What is interesting is that the logs show Rx Dima mentioning building an igloo earlier that day. Compare that to the DM, which says that the Maze of Doom and the igloo were built to escape the mob infestation. The chat logs have no reference to this. Instead, David is the one who says he's moving far away, not because of a glitch, but because his hotel was griefed by a player named Ahmed. Rx Dima says they'll make an igloo and then help David move. It's not clear if this igloo is for David or not. Since the igloo was not designed to escape the glitches, it appears that we found a contradiction with the forum post. This leads logically to an important question. When did the glitch mobs first get referenced in the logs? Finding this will help us narrow down the moment when these issues started. As with most Minecraft servers, chat messages that are angry or surprised at mobs are fairly common. But on March 16th at 5.46pm, we find some messages that appear different. David logs on and is shocked by the huge number of zombies, a zombie apocalypse as described by Rx Dima. The players comment on the extreme lag. A bit later is the first reference to a cursed structure. Dude, come here. There's something wrong with this structure. It's evil, I get it now. I get how they spawn like that. They continue later. Look at this thing. This thing is full of evil. Mobs come from there. After a few minutes, something else weird happens. David logs out and logs back in, but the spawn point has changed. Neither David nor Rx Dima know why. These messages seem to suggest that the mob spam first appears somewhere around this point in time. So let's explore to see if there's anything else notable around this point. Ten minutes before the zombie apocalypse chats, we find something intriguing. At 5.34pm, the server boots into the Brabantia world, and then converts the map. This is bizarre. Let me explain why. Back near the beginning of the video, I discussed how the world level save format changed between Beta 1.2 and Beta 1.3. If you loaded an old world into Beta 1.3, it would automatically convert it into the new save format. But it's super weird that it's happening here. We know that the Brabantia world was created natively on Beta 1.3. Therefore, there's no reason it would ever need to be converted, since it never used the old level format. So why do we see logs of its conversion? Backing up further into the log, we discover something. On March 18th, 2011, at 3.57pm, the server boots using the version Beta 1.201. Instead of the default jar, the server is booted using Craft Bucket. This is the only time this ever happens in the log file. The spawn area is prepared, but the log is then filled with error messages. David G and a user named LionLev both attempt to join, but they're kicked immediately because of an outdated server error. The server is rebooted, this time back to Beta 1.3 and this is where we see that the world is converted. So here's what happened. The server had been upgraded to Beta 1.3, including the new MC Region save format. The admin decided to run Burbancha using Craft Bucket instead of the default server jar. When the admin used Craft Bucket Beta 1.2, the server didn't understand the level format and instead generated a new level using the old Alpha save format. The players who tried to join were kicked because they were running Beta 1.3. They didn't know that the server had been downgraded to Beta 1.2. The server version was then switched back to Beta 1.3. The server program saw that there was map data from the old format, so it converted that data to MC Region. And as soon as the players logged on, they saw the mob issues. Holy f There's additional evidence in favor of this interpretation. Remember how the Brabantia map has a border where there are chunk generation differences? What happened is upon the downgrade, a new seed was generated for the world, since the Beta 1.2 version didn't recognize that a world existed. Then, on the upgrade, the server converted the generated terrain to the new format. It also took the seed and applied it to the world, overriding whatever previous seed existed. This is why there are sharp borders in the terrain, because the seed changed to whatever the Beta 1.2 seed was on the downgrade. Presumably, this is why the spawn changed as well. The level conversion code was not designed for a situation where a world already existed, and I believe this is a potential explanation as to what cursed the world. Perhaps this is the cause of the mob spam. But this doesn't completely answer everything. There's no specific evidence as to why the dense cow blocks appeared. But I think it's at least plausible that this downgrade-upgrade sequence is to blame. The mob issues are not referenced in chat beforehand, and as soon as the upgrade was completed, they're discussed. The timeline makes sense, and we know that the conversion code was operating in an unexpected way, since it would never typically run with the pre-existing MC region save data. So unless someone can come up with a better idea, this is my working theory. There's some other stuff that's worth talking about. 
If you look at the replies to the initial forum post, there are several people who say that this situation is fake. To be honest, that was my initial thought going into this project. Someone messed up their world to make something intentionally creepy. And there's a reason they might have done this. David sent the DM to Faceless, but this person has another name, SpicyCrap666. As it turns out, they were actually a YouTuber who covered mysterious things found in games, kind of like a certain someone. David sent the DM to Spicy asking for help, and Spicy posted it to a public forum so that the community could help solve the mystery. Spicy initially made a video introducing the topic. It was released on July 11, 2014, the same day that he made the forum post. The video is now taken down, but an archived version exists. However, the video doesn't really add much, it's mostly there just to get people to help solve the mystery. On November 15th, Spicy updated the forum post to say that the mystery had been solved. But nowhere was I able to find what this supposed solution is. There's no link to any sort of new text containing a recap. It also does not appear that Spicy made an update video either. Unfortunately, right now all of Spicy's videos are removed. However, an archive page of his channel shows the initial video from July, but there's no Minecraft-themed video from November. A re-upload channel has an undated Minecraft mystery video, but it does not reference Burbantia at all. Searching through the old forum posts yields nothing. So we don't really know what solution Spicy found, if it even existed at all. Maybe they found the same thing as me, but maybe not. So instead, we're forced to make our own conclusions. Ultimately, I do not think that this map was faked. It does appear to me as though this archive contains a server that actually did exist and was in fact used by a group of friends back in 2011. There are thousands of messages, and while all of this could theoretically be fabricated, it would take a truly tremendous amount of work to pull it off. I just don't think that many would find it worthwhile, especially since Minecraft ARGs did not really exist back in 2014. However, there are a few things in the DM that don't quite match up. The unreasonable number of creepers does not seem to exist in the archive, instead it appears to be cows. Furthermore, the idea that the igloo was created to escape the mob swarm is not backed up by evidence in the chat. But since these are both stories from three years before the DM, it's certainly possible that David is simply misremembering what happened on Burbantia. The core of their 2011 story appears to match up with the files, it's just that the minor details have become fuzzy. I do, however, think that they're probably embellishing their explorations from 2014. The random blue screen crashes they mention are plausible. While I couldn't replicate it, it's certainly possible they had a system configuration that had issues with running old beta versions. The existence of a lot of cow mobs is obviously supported by the files, and most of the locations they mention are there too. The glaring exception to this is the grave made of quartz above the maze. Frankly, it's just not there. Even if we load the world using 1.7.10, the Minecraft version in July 2014, there's simply nothing like that anywhere that I can find. Maybe David felt the need to make his story a bit more juicy to increase the chances that Spicy would look at it, I'm not sure. But from my investigations, there's nothing like a quartz grave anywhere. This is a Minecraft mystery that has been simmering for about a decade, and it's one that was nearly forgotten forever. It's fairly deep down the iceberg of obscure Minecraft mysteries, especially for the English-speaking player base. I had a lot of fun diving into this topic. Ironically, this idea was sent to me in a DM, and I want to thank that user for showing me this mystery. They've also helped me with some of the translation. I shouldn't need to say this, but please do not harass any of the people mentioned in this video. Also, I need to warn you that the logs in the archive contain some extremely NSFW language, and as always, I make no guarantees whatsoever as to the safety of the files I've mentioned today. If you want to download them, you download them at your own risk. Let me know in the comments what you think. Did you enjoy the video? Did I miss something? I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And if you enjoyed our time together, feel free to subscribe, it really helps me out. This has been Retro Gaming Now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.